Thank you. It does just keep getting weirder. We are relation. We are interwoven in a primordial relationality. It could be that nothing is known outside of relation. Nothing knowable comes constructed ex nihilo, void of context. There is an entanglement of the knower in the known. There is a presumption of inescapable connectivity. Potentiality implies non-separability. I believe the state we reach and immerse in in the float is a powerful or pre-state of relationality. It is a contemplative space which helps us to activate uncertainty into possibility. There is an echo here of Buddhism's mindful unknowing, or maybe an aware pre-knowing. As you enter the tank, become immersed, many of your sensory receptors, proprio and extero receptors, and systems go quiescent. You become, in essence, embraced. Skin surface and fluid surface meld, and one becomes milieu, becomes solution. Interesting phrase, that, becomes solution, in that as brain waves begin to slow, one begins to slough off the scales of reality, the responsibilities, the tasks, the conundrums, the worries, the traumas, the consensus parts. For we live in a consensus reality. We have a bottom-up perception, but a top-down control. We know that the majority of the brain's feedback circuits are inhibitory, Human consciousness tends or trends more constrained than unconstrained. But as we drop into low alpha and theta, reality becomes fluid. We become released in immersion, then become suspended in and witness to a pre-definitional more purely relational state of reality. Our awareness becomes more resonance than identifying. This is a deeper, calmer, more expansive reality. And common in theogenic wisdom states that we must relinquish control and submit to the experience of the expanded and the enhanced. From focus, to flow, to freedom. I call this the protean state, the essential creative state, in part that one doesn't need to deconstruct to reconstruct. In a sense, this is Shoshin's, Zen Buddhism's beginner's mind. One is floating in possibility and creation becomes more primal and purposeful sans the detritus of culture. Creation and change become more easeful, more natural, more playful, and often weirder. <laughs> But also in the phrase, becomes solution, one by nature of becoming more purely natural or of suspension in a more natural state, one can, one can begin to perceive oneself 
in relation to the self and to the other differently, and to reweave oneself in the world fabric. One can then become solution to the problematic of an over-egoic and conflictual way of being in the world. In essence, one becomes one with, becomes of, not opposed to. This is a profoundly simple yet complex state, and is it not through simplicity that we more easily access profundity and depth? We are not overwhelmed with the chattering, the complexity, the perturbations of the surface. Too often created to control and distract us from our truer, more creative natures. Could this experience, this practice, help us to become more calm, more kind, and compassionate in this ever complexifying and too often alienating culture? I believe it is vital to contemplate this state and experience, to think about it intently and at length, to meditate, to muse, to gaze, to observe, to ponder this imponderable. I hope in time to convene a council of contemplatives for this purpose, to theorize, to speculate. And isn't speculation a precursor to exploration? To help create a web of relation with other theories, concepts, and information from scientific and other literatures. To that end, briefly, a few examples. The systems theorist and quantum biologist Stuart Kaufman's poised realm, where conscious awareness is the observational or measuring process in which quantum coherence or wave state decoheres to classical reality. Could the alpha-theta state be related to this, or could it be the in-between state of this process, the awareness that creates reality? In Wallace J. Nichols' Blue Mind or in Nature Wilderness Immersion Practices, could the alpha-theta state be the primary operative for letting go with its cavalcade of health, therapeutic, and awareness benefits? In psychiatrist Tononi's Integrated Information Theory of Consciousness, could alpha-theta be the unintegrated information field which is a pre-state attuned to the integration of information. Could there be a relation between alpha-theta, a state of almost pure process, and William Conley's concept of an integrated, pluralistic political ethics, a political relationism in his world, in his work called The World of Becoming? Is the alpha-theta state, the trance state of shamanism? Is it the deep meditative state, the state of spiritual rapture, the state which helps explain impermanence, codependent arising, the not-self, the Buddhism's plenum void, Thich Nhat Hanh's interbeing, or Buddhism's concept of anicca, that which gives rise to connectedness? that nothing stays the same from moment to moment? Is it the waft that weaves? It seems so simple. Maybe not. Simple, but not simplistic. Maybe it is related to the moment of complexity, where chaos and order meet, where creativity, surprise, and invention are at their most potent. There is an unraveling taking place, and yet to unravel, we can re-ravel, come together, 
slightly changed, maybe enhanced, certainly re-energized, beginning to understand that perspective becomes potential. If the hardwired can soften, become more fluid, don't we become suspended in a creative milieu, become more adaptable, and thus resonate more deeply with the other? Hasn't desire become an ecologic? Our structural nature is to be a semiconductor. All kinds of energy move through us. We are porous. And as we soften and open, we not only feel more, we feel the other more. This is codependent arising. This is community. We are not separate. We are relation, and in this, there is hope. You are the providers and the keepers of a practice that reaches true profundity through this simplicity. I don't know if this is the poised realm or the unintegrated information state or a ground state to a world of becoming, or that it rearranges neural pathways and synaptic dynamics. It certainly seems so, based on intuition, speculation, anecdotal information, and the possible paradigm-changing research being done at Lieber. There is a great change taking place, which will continue in part as a function of growth there will likely be a de-territorialization followed by a re-territorialization and then a new fertile ground, in part based on the experience, the practice of the flow. This will facilitate growth in this industry, which is essential, because it is this state, this experience, this practice, informed by science, articulated by a language that is a medium of metamorphosis, a language that is another sensorium outside of the body, is felt and realized by art, and interconnected and spread by the spirit in us that will allow us to endure, to grow, and to be the change which is needed in this world. It is you, your hearts, your minds, your energy, your courage, your endurance, which do this. It is your passion and your spirit and your love which drive this. We are blessed. So, float on. <laughs>